Welcome to the Bombfest. My name is Kate Oman. I am the gallery coordinator here and we have some exciting news. We have a new video series that we're going to be doing and our guest host speaker will be Miss Pat Free. And I am introducing you now to Pat. Hi there. Uh, welcome. I'm here as a docent and I want to be able to take you through the show all mixed up. We've got the uh, well, poster for it right now, and you can even see the dates. The show started on the 6th, and it's going to run until the 17th of this month. So we're hoping that you have a chance to come on down. But we also want to take you through the show so that you can see some of the highlights and get to know the pieces. Come on in. Docent, I just like to help people go through a show, look at pieces, and maybe see things that, well, they hadn't considered before. So when I first come into a show, I like to just pan the whole space and take it in and let my eye decide what might be interesting to start with. You know, an exhibition isn't, doesn't have rules. There isn't a place where you have to start. So you kind of let your eye lead you around. I will tell you that when I first walked into the show and I started here in the middle, my eye was immediately drawn to three large pieces. Three large pieces that are metallic. There's one on this side of the room and this side. And then all the way back. And we're going to start all the way back with this really splendid picture. This is a large piece, but it's got a really familiar form. Now, the show is called All Mixed Up, and that's because these artists are using lots of different kinds of materials not just uh, like oil paints or watercolor. They're, they're using everything from, oh, well, what you see here, metals, to wax and uh, paper, collage and print materials. So that's what's so fun about this show. Now, in this piece, and why I was so attracted to it, this piece by Stella Larkin, um, it's in a familiar form, a rectangle. You are used to looking at artwork probably hung on walls in a rectangle. And a lot of times those rectangles are filled with uh, oil paint or maybe watercolor. Here though, the artist has played a little bit with your intentions, your expectations, and shown you a metal. How do you know it's metal? Well, you all are probably pretty familiar with the colors and textures of different metals. And this artist has taken different metals, um, what looks like copper to me, and kind of a silvery uh, metal, and hammered out a space in this, in this rectangle. Then taken some other metals and made some embellishments on the top and on, on the bottom, and even ending up with some feathers. What is so cool, I think, about this is, this isn't how I usually see metal. This is what I love about art. Artists always try to help you see the world in a different way. Metal, to me, always suggests stuff like, um, oh, building materials and, um, well, coins, things like that. Don't usually see them hanging on the wall. This artist has taken the form and really played with it for you. So I like to go in when I look at a work, I sort of take it all in at first, and then I kind of go in a little deeper, especially if I'm intrigued. So I'm gonna go right over to the title, and it says, Magic Carpet, Moon Deer. Then the list of the materials. This artist has really included a lot. Wood, fiber, 
found objects, bottle caps, velvet dress, and scrap metal. I have to say that um, after reading that, then I start kind of looking into, wow, really? I, I didn't see, like for instance, the velvet. Now that I'm looking at the background, this black background, and, then, and these little forms that are sort of floating in that as if they were stars, I see the velvet. And I think that's so clever the way she's used that. Then uh, it says, uh, moon deer. And right here in the center, here's this copper piece that she looks like she's um, repurposed. Maybe she found that in, I don't know, uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe, I was thinking jello mold, to tell you the truth at first. I don't know about you, but my grandmother had a lot of these kind of jello molds. But maybe this doesn't quite look like that, but maybe. And, um, She's taken it and put it in this form and put these battle, bottle caps that she's beaten across uh, to highlight that moon deer. But this is the moon deer's magic carpet, it seems like, and I almost get the sense that it's a form um, almost from Arabia. And uh, I'm bringing my own my own background, my own thoughts to the art piece. You know, art is a conversation. It is not just what the artist intends, but you as a viewer, what you bring to it, your feelings, your associations to something. And that's what can make it so much fun. So moon deer here, I think, is really a deer. Um, I enjoy this and it it gives me that sort of sense of smile, my, uh, my delight at looking at materials that I don't expect, forms I don't expect, and putting them in a new way. And I love that she put the whoop, feathers at the ends here. These look like wires that have been beaten into these rounder shapes, and then these feathers at the end as if it's floating. And then that juxtaposition between the hard metal and something that's heavy and weighty to something that's floating like a magic carpet. There's another artist I think who plays really nicely with form and material again, something unexpected, but maybe a familiar form. And that's just right around here. Big piece, you can't ignore it. You see this piece and you go, wow, <laughs> it's really tall. I'm going to guess I'm 5'6". Uh, so what? Uh, another foot or a foot and a half above that. So really tall image right here. Sculpture. It's three-dimensional. And when I first look at a piece, I do do that. I look at the whole thing at first. And my eye then goes in to make some sense about what I might be seeing. Right away, I noticed a recognizable form in some ways, and I bet you do too. But let's look at it a little more closely. In the middle here in the center, you've got a large wooden piece. And up here, there's a stone that's been placed, and it looks as if there's rebar around the stone and then some wires up from there and some crystal pieces hanging from the sides as if they were like for me it's read sort of like antenna at first so um i'm really intrigued with the materials this big wooden piece looks like an old railroad tie to me. And when I'm curious about those things, then I often look into the signature or the little nameplate of Bob the Piece. So this is by Larry Godfrey. It's called uh, One Who Watches Over. And the materials are beechwood, 
old fireplace screen, you look at the trees right away, antique barbed wire, antique copper table, Lake Superior stone, and an umbrella stand. Oh, right away I'm kind of smiling. I'm like, wow, those are things I wouldn't put together normally. But he has, he has in a really, I think, uh, unique, lively way, unexpected way. This play on form and material, materials that you wouldn't expect with this kind of form because this creature, and I'm going to call it a creature because those two dots up there sort of look like eyes to me, and this looks like a face and a body, and of course the rebar coming up up here and the forms that are shaped that look like hands. I see wings in the back. And my first thought about this was that perhaps this was an angel, because those are the, the images that I know that have wings, angels, insects. And he did call this one who watches over. So it seems to suggest to me of an angel, angelic form. But I don't know about you, I have never seen a, an angel made out of antique, let's see, what did he call it? Oh, old fireplace screen. I guess that that's what this is here in the wings. So this play on materials and forms is unexpected. That's what this mixed media show can do for you, is really jazz up, mix up your point of view, what you expect, so you can see something you don't. And that's what's so fun. And this piece really is. Anyway, I do have some more things for you to look at. I'm super excited because we have one of the artists here with us, Ms. Kate Oman, right over here. Hey, everybody. Long time no see. <laughs> I have noticed something about this show. There are four artists here who have made um, images and a whole work out of 52 cards. And I'm really interested in that. I, I have to say, I'm always intrigued with how you can give an artist some direction and some parameters, but they make it their own. And you really have done that. You took these cards, and they were a metaphor, right? Yes, yeah. So this piece is called Many Moons and Suns. And uh, yeah, the parameters for the show was just to use a deck of cards, standard deck of playing cards, 52 of them. And to me, there's 52 cards in a deck. There are 52 weeks in a year. What represents time better than suns and moons? So to me, this is the passage of time. And I went ahead and Googled quotes that include the sun and the moon. And I came up with all these quotes that I liked um, that I could find images that would go along with it. Um, I spent almost a whole year looking for suns and moons. Um, <laughs> most of these images a whole year. are, yes. Uh, include the actual moon or some variation thereof. In fact, my own photography, I took that through oh, a cool. binocular years ago. Wow. And, uh, oh, binocular. Yeah. Well, telescope, actually. That one was a telescope. Okay. Yeah. But I have a couple other pieces. There's actually me in here. Um, I believe this is card. It's right there. Ah, there you are. Look it up. Yeah. So, just those images, and I've really been attracted to the moon um, because I like all things space. <laughs> so uh, the moon is the one space body that we can see obviously really distinctly during the nighttime, but our sun blocks out all those other celestial bodies, but is a celestial body itself. So the sun, um, I was drawn more to doing the moon when I started, but I found once I actually applied the quotes and things to the actual background. I liked the composition better of the sun. Um, also the depth. Uh, I like how you can see the moon here, but as a full moon, any direction you look, but this brings you in because of its shape. 
wow, you know, I'm just really, as you were, were talking, you know, the notion of, it took you time, a whole year, 52 weeks, mm -hmm. to make this, this metaphor on time. And um, you took the time. Everything in here seems so um, intentional, even the way the cards hang, mm -hmm. like they're, they're flowing, and that notion of time, how we experience time in so many different ways. And um, we are a floating object in space, for goodness sakes. So I'm just really uh, fascinated how you put this together. And, Thank you so much for giving us more highlights about it. And a side note, in case no one notices, I actually, uh, the background I reflected to be the shape of a card as well. Ah! And if you notice, there's two different colors, just like a deck of cards. And yeah, there's just all sorts of things. Lots of things that <laughs> pull you in. And the more you look at it, the more you see. Yeah, always, that is so true with art. You know, a lot of times we have to just give our self the time it takes to just piece things together, go through things just a little step at a time. What am I looking at? How do I feel as I'm looking at it? Those kind of questions can really help us. And um, it's just delightful. It gives you that sense of uh, so much more as you spend that time. And of course, I don't know about you, but I, I always have the sensation of it moves, and I love that. Of course, I want to make it move, you know, with my, with my <laughs> breath and, you know, the air from the heat. Well, it's funny you talk about time, too, because um, normally by trade, I'm a photographer. So, click, done. You know, I mean, for me, I do some different editing. So, maybe I put in 15, 20 minutes into the type of photography I personally do as an artist. But for this, this took much more time. And I will say, I got a lot of gratification to actually produce something that I was happy with, because I'm very finicky about my own personal stuff. So to actually produce something that was tangible and has space and takes up space mm -hmm. uh, was very interesting. A really for me. different way and it, it, for you to work. Right, and it, it encourages me to do more of this type of work personally. So as an artist, I learned from this experience as well. Isn't it fun to hear what an artist's intentions and, and all the things that go into how they produce something? Uh, you know, artists aren't doing things by accident. <laughs> they really do put a lot of thought into the things. And um, I just, this really enriched my experience of looking at it, so thank you. Um, we've got more of the cards, and I really wanted to show you that. Two more artists over here on this side. drawn to when I first, my first pass through this gallery was this piece by Taryn Oakson, I think her last name, I may be mispronouncing it, but um, I was very drawn to it. Now sometimes I don't know why I'm drawn to something, and it's in reflection that um, I found out what was going on. So she is another artist who's taken the 52 cards and she has them interspersed all through this one kind of canvas. So she sort of wants you to look at it like a large one piece. And when you step back from the picture just a bit, you look at it and it's those pops of yellow that just kind of draw your eye because most of the other colors in the, in the piece are kind of neutral. And it's a lovely lemony yellow and it just takes you right in. So right away, what I found was some forms that I personally love. Probably my favorite artist, if I could say I had a favorite, is George O'Keefe. And I'm going to guess that most of you are familiar with George O'Keefe. But George O'Keefe loved the Southwest of America. She worked in New Mexico for much of her life. And she made forms out of 
cow skulls. And here in some of the cards, some of the forms that Taryn has made, you see that. And I think that that's what really fascinated me or intrigued me about this work. And I didn't really think about that until later when I was reflecting on it. But that made me curious to know more about her. Like, is she from there? Um, what does she know about that part of the world? Was that her intention? So that's when I went in and read her artist statement. And she talks about, I'm just going to paraphrase, but invite you to come and look at it when you're down here. Uh, she, I'm just going to paraphrase. She went on an RV trip. And it sounds like she went during the pandemic. And she went on this trip to the Southwest. And she was exploring those forms, those natural forms. And you can see that um, after reading her statement, uh, you, I was drawn even more into the, into the picture. And I see all of these things that I recognize, but that I don't usually think of as art, like pieces of shell. And she's put shell here and here here and dried up flowers. I'm not quite sure what this is, but maybe some bark of some kind. You all might know. And it looks like uh, leaves and maybe ground or sand. So it's her intention to incorporate uh, all these different natural forms but she changes them up and puts them with materials that we think of when we consider art or with visual art. And that is paint and line. Uh, looks like a line of uh, a pencil or pen. Um, and it may be right here that this is a print, the way this is so symmetrical. I was thinking that that might be. And some of these other forms of it, I'm not quite sure. And that's what was so cool. All of the different materials that she's used. She's also repeated some of the forms, but in each replication, she's used different kinds of materials subtly to shift your eye, to make you think about it differently. Um, let's just looking at She's repeated the ravens, for instance, but looking at the cow skulls, there's this one up here, way up in the corner, and it has this beautiful blue background, and it looks textural. I'm not so sure how she made it, and that's uh, intriguing to me. It's always when I want to like, take off my glasses, you notice, and I want to get right up to it and see, well, how'd she do that? Then going down into the form, you see another cow skull, and she centered that in, in that card. And taken something really thick, like an impasto paint, and really highlighted it. Here again, the skull is off to this other side. And there's another that looks more in the muted tones. And here is just a whisper of a drawing of one of the, the skulls. It's so light and delicate. It's really beautiful. It's a paint wash, very thin and fine. And then she just changes up the line again for you and makes a more like two-dimensional form at just the contour of the line here. So this is an artist that's really liking to play with the materials, the form, but then putting it together as a unified whole. I just thought this was really splendid, and I hope that you do too. Another artist using the cards. Again, the theme of 52 cards and how you're going to use them, I just think, you know, it's. Uh, the delight of originality and the creativity that's so splendid about looking at art. But here is Phyllis Fleury. 
Phyllis is a lovely person. She is often on our gallery crew. She is an artist as well. And she's taken the cards and made a self-portrait. Now, how do I know that's a self-portrait? Well, I know Phyllis, so I know that that's an image of her. And she's made it like a mosaic. So I'm just gonna go over here and read what she's put on the nameplate. And it says 52 cards, one week at a time. Her materials, deck of playing cards, newspaper, magazines, and glue. So she doesn't give you, she isn't calling it a self-portrait, but it is. And I think that is really cleverly done because it looks as if it's a mosaic. Now, probably a lot of you uh, know mosaics that are made out of um, uh, ceramics or glass. And she's taken, it appears, the cards and cut them up in little pieces and put this image of her face, her eyes and nose and mouth. And you see her quite clearly. But of course, there's all these words next to her image. And I'm going to guess that they are a personal reference as well. So boy, does she invite you to take off your glasses and to look a little closer. And you see all these different words. And it's so fun to focus in because you see things like hope, Michigan, Door County. What if we all just paused? Uh, pandemic vaccine, making a comment about our contemporary lives right now. So she has a, probably all of the words that she's chosen and the images are something personal to her. Now, some of, you know, when I'm looking at these things, of course, I identify too with those things, but it also makes me want to get to know Phyllis more and understand what these things might mean to her. Again, intriguing. Putting my glasses back on, I'm going to bring you over right into this grouping. I'm often um, stymied when I think about showing artworks. How will a gallery crew and the gallery director show three-dimensional objects? We're used to looking at pictures on a wall, but that's not the only way art comes. And what's so great about this um, mixed materials show is that a lot of artists have elected to make, uh, well, sculptural forms. Some have been carved, and there are two of them right here by R. Putvin. What is his first name? Robert. Robert. And Robert here, I like that he's given it R. Putvin. You may not have had to put a man or woman there, but you know, I, I guess I'm just used to men carving, so I guess I'm just gonna think of it that way. But um, he has made two birds, and these birds are birds that uh, you all notice in your lives, right? Uh, we've got a robin here, American robin, and a Baltimore oriole. I don't see those a lot of times, but sometimes really early in the spring. His intention, it appears, is to make something highly realistic, representative, we call it. And these, and it's just to get an appreciation for how you can take something like a solid block of wood and carve in it so delicately that you uh, recognize this and maybe even would mistakenly see a bird when you first pass through, and they're beautiful. I mean, you look at these and you go, wow, that's so splendid. Uh, you can even see the patterns of the feathers when you look even closer. While I was looking through this show the first time, uh, Kate did a nice job of showing something to me, and this is always the, so much fun to go into a show with somebody else. They see things that you might not have, but she said, Look here, Pat, 
he even put the little stamp from the supermarket on the orange that he carved so that you can see this is so realistic, right? It is mixed media though. He's made this out of this Baltimore oil out of basswood and acrylic paint, driftwood. That's that background that he's put this on, mounted this um, carving on, the wire and the ash base. Look at the nail that he's even put through the orange. It's no mistaking that he really wants you to know and appreciate the form of a bird. And they are beautiful. Um, and then uh, the fun over here, this American robin in the springtime with the worm coming out of the hole and the new dinner that it's about to get. And it almost feels it's so representative, like the bird is going to peek down and peck at that and get that one right now. A less realistic looking form, but is still as intriguing is this one uh, by Bonnie Bartell. It's called Imagine. And it's like a little world. I almost felt, um, and you probably know the stories of uh, Gulliver and the Lilliputtons and these little people and how fun this artist has made this little form, like a, it's almost like an island and it looks like natural materials. She hasn't labeled every one of these materials, but she calls, she says that her, that her materials are weaving, uh, assemblage, painting. So um, when you uh, scoot on down and look into the form, it looks like a little house. It's got an opening here and this, these rocks, these painted rocks that look like a walkway, as if you could invite you right on in. And luckily, there's two large what uh, openings on each side and they look like windows. So you can peek into this house and it's so cool to see what she meant by painting. It's right on up here in the very miniature easel. That's a little flower painting. So it's, uh, I got the sense that it's an artist's studio. And what uh, an intriguing, fun way to depict that. Um, over here we have another house even by uh, Diane Cribbs Mays. And she too, uh, she has a playfulness about her that just can't be beat. Um, you know it's a house because she's called it the house that glass built. So this is made out of glass, but many other materials you see here on the tops and on the sides that she has, it looks like glued on like wooden sticks. And then on the sides of the house, there are even more glass images built up. And along uh, the perimeter of the house, it looks like she's taken, well, maybe scrabble, scrabble tiles. And um, she's, she's put some words together, but a lot of them are just made like tiles. So in this, she calls, uh, she says she's used masonite, uh, scrabble tiles, there you go, uh, fire logs, paper, glass, cinnamon sticks. See, now I want to go and find the cinnamon stick. Um, packing paper, felt, film, pine cones, dried star fruit, <laughs> and wire, and coffee grounds. Now this is mixed materials, definitely. And I think it's almost like she's inviting you on a scavenger hunt to go through this and look for all these different materials. I see the wires and I see certainly the scrabble tiles. And what she's really charmingly done for you is she's put a little skylight uh, in the roof form. 
And when you peek on in, ah, there's the pine cone. And I see some beautiful glass tiles and some other things. But I'm going to be on the hunt for the cinnamon sticks. I, I'm not finding them, but I'm going to guess they're there. And maybe you'd like to come down and find them yourself. But this is an artist who just loves to uh, delight and play, be playful, make you amused. Don't we need that? So. Oh, no, 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 no. We have one more piece we've got to show. Oh, yeah. We've got to yeah. come over here. Come on over this way. It's this piece, right? Yes. And another 52 cards. Exactly. So, we would like to thank you for watching, and we are really excited to be able to introduce Pat to everyone here. And we're looking forward to working more with Pat during each of our exhibits. We'll go through and do a video uh, or two, or maybe three, on the different art that you can see here at the Boniface Art Center. Again, thank you for visiting.